In today's ETF Prism Report, we're going to discuss the, call it, merger or marriage of two unique fintech concepts. The ETF, which has allowed investors liquid, transparent, low-cost exposure to investing, and Bitcoins, which is a new form of encryption and infrastructure for transactions. But before we get into the weeds of that, this marriage, let's first cover a little bit about what is a Bitcoin and why is everybody so excited about it? What are the three ETFs that have been proposed? What are the odds that this will actually go through? And finally, will it be a good investment and should it go through? So let's start with why is everybody so excited? Well, it's charts like these that show the utilization of the products. Um, it shows, you know, there are plenty of others that show this, the value of Bitcoin and its massive rise. And everybody wants to be part of something like this. And they go, okay, so it's a new currency. It's crowdsourced. I'm in. It's not quite that simple. I look at Bitcoins more like uh, the way it's laid out in this Deloitte and Touche white paper. It's the internet of value exchange. A Bitcoin itself's value is the value placed on expanding the infrastructure. That infrastructure is commonly called the blockchain and it can be used in a way to transfer securities, to create AI, to secure real estate transactions or art transactions. And it's just like the internet in that it's not owned by somebody. So how could that be legit? Uh, the reality is the process itself is what makes this thing so valuable, right? The blockchain is created by miners. The miners are compensated with Bitcoins. Each time they create a new one, the encoding gets more complicated. Once complete, the infrastructure, well, when I say once complete, right now and further in the future as well, this infrastructure can replace the use of many private versions of encrypted transfer of assets. So something that interesting people want to invest in. Hence comes the next step, which is the idea of putting it into an investable vehicle like an ETF. Let's be extremely clear though, if you want to purchase Bitcoins today, you can. So the ETF structure is not about making it accessible. It's about making it investable to your traditional investor. So the first one and most controversial one that we've seen a lot in the news, probably a lot more than you would expect for an ETF that's still in filing, is the Winklevoss twins. Um, and they have filed and they're forced a deadline of March 11th to find out whether or not this will be approved. Key things about this that stand out, it's in the grantor trust structure, similar to GLD, which is the gold ETF. It uses their exchange to set the price. So you can see the benefits to them of such a product. Um, so that's the one that's most likely to come out or most likely to be reviewed in the near future. There is another one from Solid X, uh, which has a deadline of only March 30th. So it's not very far behind. The biggest difference between this and the Winklevoss one is one, they included a type of insurance on the Bitcoin exchanges in case there's a hacking or something like that, which ironically would be much harder to, to actually do if the blockchain was being used. Number two, uh, they don't use their, the Winklevoss exchange. They're using an amalgamation of multiple exchanges to set the price. The third already in a lot of ways exists. This is the Grayscale product. It is an ETP, not an ETF. Um, they use the Jobs Act to create an LP that owns Bitcoins. They listed it after 13 months on the OTC market and you can trade it today. They have recently, I think it was late January, filed to create an ETF version of this existing idea. So now on to will it get approved? Well, let's talk a little bit about the process of being approved. Um, Bob Tull is, you know, has worked in this industry for a long time, helping structure things. And he's got a great article on his site about the process. You know, the process itself has gotten much simpler with generic listing standards, but with a product like this, it doesn't apply. So they're having to go through the 19B4 process and try and convince 
the SEC staff that this meets all the requirements to allow for an exemptive relief to launch an ETF of Bitcoins. It seems as though over the last few years, they've dealt with quite a bit of those questions. Um, I've seen them expanding the liquidity. They've, you know, addressed many of the concerns. But with all that said, there's an actual website where you can go and use futures to take an opinion on whether or not this will become an ETF. And right now, with all the positive news that have occurred, it's up to a 41% chance, according to investors, that this will take place. Research a week or two ago was all citing it at 10 and 25%. Um, I think most of the public issues we've all seen and they've addressed them. I believe that the biggest issues are more with the structure. So I don't think the other product from Solid X solves this at all either. Now, a more interesting thing to look at besides, you know, what people are betting is the grayscale product that currently exists. It has historically traded at a substantial premium to the value of Bitcoins because it gave liquid access to them in an investable vehicle. You can see here that over the last few weeks, the premium that people are willing to pay to access it has come down substantially. There's been times where this is at a 90% premium to NAV, and now it's in the 15% range. That tells me that many people think it's going to happen. Um, so what does this all get down to? Will it happen? Will it not? So my opinion would be more in the 50% range. I do think there are some serious questions about the grantor trust structure um, and whether or not a Bitcoin fits in there, right? A a Bitcoin has to be a physical asset. It has to be homogenized. And those are things required by the grantor trust structure. And I think those are difficult arguments to make um, regardless of the demand. All that said, I went to look to see, you know, how often does the SEC say no to things like this? And there's very little examples of them saying no. Um, I think that's mainly because most people work it out with them before they force the 19B4 process. Um, I only see no's to a couple of actively managed structures that were non-transparent. We don't have that issue here. But with the 50-50 chance, the question then becomes, do you want to invest in this? The answer is, I believe, yes. Uh, this is an infrastructure that has value. Uh, the ETF structure combined with it really is better for the Bitcoin than it is for the ETF invest for the investor. An investor that wants long-term exposure to a, this infrastructure and Bitcoins can get it today. It is more along the lines of making it more accessible and more legitimized. So for the buy and hold investor, an ETF would be just fine. For the trader, I don't think it's a great idea for the infrastructure or the investment world. Thank you for your time.